Next, talk about what is a handheld refractometer. Let me see if I can switch videos there. So this is a handheld refractometer. It comes with a pipette. It comes with a screwdriver for calibration. If you take off the underside uh, foam or the top side foam, you'll also see the directions on how to use it, the operation manual, and a microfiber cloth. Microfiber cloth is the only way you're supposed to clean this prism. If you clean it with anything else, you can get scratches on it, uh, and that changes the measurements. So we have all of these pieces here, and we'll talk more about them in the activity. But in general, what you're gonna do is you're gonna wanna put two or three drops right at the top here, and then you're gonna close this, and I just thought it's close, and you should, depending upon it, see the solution go down and cover the entire prism. If you have one or two small air bubbles, I've actually found that your measurements come out just fine. Then you're gonna hold it up to your eye and aim it towards some sort of light. Um, outside light works well. Uh, I have a light right here that I'm aiming it towards. And what you should see is a light to dark transition with light on the bottom. And you should see even, oh, uh, adjustments. Uh, the main adjustment that you have to make other than to calibrate it once is by turning this. So it tends to start uh, or come all the way in. And for me, that's pretty blurry. So I have to unscrew it while I'm looking in here. And you can see the scale. If I can get it lined up right. There it is. And you'll see three scales if you've got the right one. On the left is the lowest number is 1.333. That is uh, the index of refraction. And you'll see uh, ND right under it. Then there's two other scales, uh, which are more for, well, one of them is specific gravity. That's the one on the right. And the one in the center is weight percent pro, um, protein in urine. So those, but this is the only one we can get that actually has refractive index. Other people have similar handheld refractometers that work for, uh, or have units of bricks or percent bricks bricks or percent bricks is percent sucrose percent sugar uh, but we we got one that is only in percent there is only in refractive index so let me put everything back here and then we'll look at this picture that we've got here and talk about it at least a little with respect to snell's law so here's our picture of our handheld refractometer and it's got an illuminator flap, so, um, uh, and that's the part that comes up. You've got a light source. Uh, there's a prism right here, measuring prism, good. And your sample, while well, you'll put two or three drops right here at the top, when you close this, uh, I call it a cover piece. Um, the solution that you're studying will go all the way over this prism. Light, unlike Snell's law where there's one angle, light will be coming at all angles. So light enters prism at all angles. And so it's not just one angle. That is one difference between Snell's law we were talking about before and the uh, handheld refractometer. Light is gonna come through here in all angles. It's gonna come through the prism and it's gonna be refracted at this prism surface, refracted at this prism surface here, and it's gonna come down here. And what you're gonna see on this scale is pictured here. You're gonna see that above this line, all light is blocked and below that where it is lighter all light goes through uh, is goes through and 
Uh, this right here, which it doesn't show, is a focusing lens. And uh, while refraction in a pretty complicated geometry is occurring here, uh, it is all according to Snell's law. And according to Snell's law, um, well, let's say this. Uh, this is what's called a critical angle. Uh, refractometer. And this is what most functioning refractometers are. So as light comes in at different angles to the surface here, there's what's called a critical angle. At the critical angle, all light is block, blocked. Or let's say this, at critical angle and above, all light is blocked. And we won't say too much more about that other than that this is a critical angle refractometer and that causes this light to dark transition for certain angles. And it's based on the value of sine and the refractive indices. Um, but then somebody has calibrated this so that it is calibrated in terms of refractive index for us, and that's what it reads out in. So that's what a handheld refractometer, or a little more about it. We'll talk more about using it when we get to the activity videos. Um, next, let's talk about what is percent by mass, because we're going to be interested in what is the percent by mass of coffee solids in um, coffee. So our interest, percent by mass coffee solids. And we're going to be interested in measuring this number because that's going to tell us how much coffee we have extracted from our coffee beans. And if you extract a perfect amount, your coffee will be as good as it can taste. That's our interest. If you under extract, there's flavors that you have not gotten out of the beans. If you over extract, you can get extra bitter parts out. And so your coffee will not be as good. In general, although maybe you like coffee that's a little bit more bitter, everybody's ideal extraction will be uh, or could be different but it'll all be based on percent by mass coffee solids and we'll see that we call it percent total dissolved solids Oop. let's put my pen down here again uh, coffee and our abbreviation will be percent TDS coffee. That's what we're going to be uh, calculating for different solutions that we make this week because we're going to use uh, Taster's Choice cof uh, Coffee. Got mine right here and you can see I've used some of it because I've already made the activity videos for this. Um, so uh, what is percent by mass? Well, let me show you the formula. The formula is going to be, so mass of coffee solids over mass of coffee solution. So that's going to be the water and the coffee together times 100% will be equal to percent TDS coffee. And so it's not too bad, I don't think. So if we do an example, and the example goes like this, so what percent TDS coffee is a solution, or is coffee, for which 1.5 grams of taster's choice is ooh, 
uh, is dissolved in 23.5 grams of water. And just to be clear, our total coffee solution, or hopefully clear, is 1.5 grams plus 23.5 grams or 25.0 grams of coffee solution. So our percent TDS is going to equal our mass of coffee solids on the top, which is our taster's choice, over our total coffee solution times 100%. And I'll get my calculator for this. 1.5 divided by 25.0 times 100. I get 6, and I'm going to put another one there. The calculator didn't show, but 6.0% TDS coffee. So when we're going to be doing these kinds of calculations for this experiment. Now, how do I use a handheld refractometer to measure coffee? Well, you're going to make a solution. With a certain percent TDS coffee. And you're going to, in fact, do this five times. You're going to measure the refractive index for each solution. And um, you're going to then graph it or graph the data. you will have percent TDS coffee on the x-axis. You will have refractive index on the y-axis, and your data will look something like, there may be a little scatter in it. And you're gonna graph the data in Excel or some other similar spreadsheet program. And I'll take you through this. Then you're going to uh, add a trend line. And display equation. Uh, and something called R squared. So uh, I don't have a very good straight edge. So let's just pretend that's the equate that line. And your equation might be something like y equals um, 0 0.018 or 194x plus, uh, what's this number, uh, 1.33325, something like that. It won't be exactly this, uh, but let's say it's something close. So uh, this is the equation that you will use for the rest of the semester. This equation means that any time you make a cup of coffee, you can measure the refractive index. You can, the refractive index is going to be, since it's on the y-axis, it's going to be your y-value. You can then plug into this equation, solve for x, and x is your percent TDS coffee. And so we will be able to know what the percent total dissolved solids coffee is for any coffee that we make by measuring the refractive index. And a couple things I'll say about this. First off, this is very sciencey stuff. This curve or this line is what's called a calibration curve. 
even though it's straight because you like to assume that it could be a curve, but this one's straight. I guess it could also be called a calibration line. Um, and then really when you use this equation, it's equivalent to saying if I know the refractive index and I go over to this line exactly horizontally and then go down, I can find my percent TDS for my coffee. And we're gonna be interested in knowing our percent TDS because that's going to allow us to know how much coffee is in our coffee.